everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Jara Lowe. Hi Jara. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. So just a little introduction. Jara is the author of Ultimate, the complete guide to UFC and mixed martial arts and is also the creator of the fiction series Cage Side Chronicles, YA fiction for the warrior at heart. Jara is also the editor of Inside MMA and International Kickboxer. Does that pretty much sum you up? That's pretty much that is my professional life. <laughs> that is, and um, and you also said you, you've had a new baby recently, so you're quite tired. True, true, but I'm all good. It's all good. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about your background. How did you go from fighting and troubled upbringing to writing? Um, it's a long story, I guess, so I'll try and give you the short version. Um, but I guess like, my, like I always liked writing. I guess from a very young age, um, I was always into writing. Like a very young age, I still I found a couple of years ago a little certificate I kind of got in one of my very early grades of you know for writing books and things like that. But I think as I went to high school and I just found other things and got into trouble, I just kind of left it on the wayside. But apart from trouble and everything, I think like a lot of people, I just didn't think it was even a job. I just you know it was a hobby and something and. And, you know, my father was an engineer and things like that and, and all the most of my friends were doing, you know, tech type things and, I, you know, it wasn't even an option to me. Like a lot of things, it's a hobby. I didn't even think of it as a professional career. So I did other things and I kind of got in a lot of trouble and things like that in my youth and later on I was just doing nothing jobs. And um, eventually, just out of nowhere, someone gave me a really good break, nothing to do with writing. They gave me a really good job and I just think I got a lot of... Um, just willpower, willpower and self-esteem and things like that out of it and I started really following what my true dream, dreams were. So I started, I was always been writing to music as well, I played music my entire life so I started doing a bit of music journalism just on the side and things like that and eventually I decided to go back to, to university and and um, I did a couple of years there and I had to do work placement um, and just by coincidence I'd looked in the, in the newspaper and um, the place where I work now, Blitz Publications, they have a stable of about eight or nine magazines and they were just looking for an editor. I didn't apply for that but I just decided to ring them and see if they wanted someone someone there and, and they did and um, I worked there a few weeks and someone left when I was there and they offered me a job and, and I've been there for about four years since and I've just been writing and writing ever since, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. So d is your degree actually in writing? Yes, professional writing and editing. Yeah, oh fantastic. Or PWE. Yeah, but I guess we should, you know, what what that sort of tells me is you, you had this kind of early dream, you didn't think you could do this as a job and, and now you do, so you've kind of just, you know, gone for it, I guess. That's right, and this was later, like I started that course when I was 26 and it was actually, it's only a, a diploma, so it's only a two-year as well. And it's like everything <clears throat> in my life, like I've got a book deal and I've got an editor's job but I don't have a degree and I don't have an agent and I and I never submitted manuscripts or things like that but I've just kind of done things other way and also I think I really tried to play catch up and I found that frustrating for me speaking to other authors and writers because writers don't necessarily uh, tend to be, I wouldn't say hard working but you know, they like to be distracted and things like that whereas I think I'm very focused. I think even though it was bad that I wasted so much of my life in my early years, I think it's really a a, a blessing for me as well because I'm just so driven and I'll do anything kind of that it takes to. And that's why I've got these opportunities because if anyone asks me anything, do you want to do this, do you want to do this, even if I don't, probably can't do it, I'll still have a go and I'll say yes. So, you know, I think it's balanced out. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I'm very driven as well, so I'm with you on that. And um, Yeah, definitely. But I, I, I see your point. I think a lot of people struggle with deciding what they want and then focusing on it. Um, do you, so um, do you think you're fighting, you know, the stuff you've done as a hobby, right? You've never fought kind of professionally. No, not really, no. But you've, you've done martial arts. I, I read you, you've done martial arts all your life. That's right, yeah, on and off since, you know, since I was a little kid, really. Yeah, do you think that helps with um, discipline in your whole life? Yeah, I think definitely, yes, definitely. I mean, I lacked discipline. Even in my teenage years when I lacked discipline, I still had a certain amount and different, like, I, yeah, once I had something in my head, I'd always, you know, I'd always keep appointments and always things like that, even at my worst, and, and I think that had to do with martial arts, definitely. Yeah. And it gives you a certain self-esteem where you think you can accomplish things as well. Mm. that I find a lot of people don't necessarily have. And I don't have a big ego, ego or anything like that. And I'm actually, you know, like most writers, I'm an introvert. 
but I just think you know I just have that that self discipline. It's not actually necessarily big confidence. It's just that I know you just have to do it and you have to put on a strong face or whatever, and you have to you know you just do it. Hmm. So how did you come to write um, Ultimate? And you'll have to explain what UFC is as well. That's fine. That's fine. Um, for, do you know what UFC is? I'm explaining no, to no, everyone else. No, explain. All right, it. UFC. It's it is called stands for Ultimate Fighting Championship. It's people might have seen it. Um, it's the fastest growing sport in the world. Um, it's when two fighters fighting in the cage, um, basically against any kind of martial art. It's a huge sport at the moment. They're talking, you know, 20 million views per fight, things like that, packing out arenas around the world. So it's kind of yep, very big sport at the moment. And I write for a magazine that covers that in Australia. So I was being the editor of that magazine since it started about three or four years ago. And um, basically HarperCollins contacted me through that because I was well known in the scene and in the industry and they wanted a book on UFC. So basically they just came to me and they'd read the magazine, they liked some of the articles that I'd written and they just – and um, they'd come to me and say, were well, you interested? And this is another example of I took the opportunity – they kind of just threw it out there. I got back to them the very next day with a complete outline of the whole book of the people that were going to be in it, um, interviews I was going to do, people that could take the photos for me, where I could source other photos, all the contacts, and they were just blown away. So they said, well, I guess you can have it. You already have a whole book, and it's only you know less than 24 hours ago. We even just we, They just threw it out there as a suggestion. So, yeah. Mm. No, that, that, that's really fantastic. A couple of things on that. I think that's a great example of having a platform already and becoming an expert in an area and then publishers are always looking for this and I, I had the same experience with Wiley um, who emailed me after an article I wrote about Scrivener and asked me to pitch in a similar way and so that's a great lesson for people like if you build up a reputation publishers come to you which is fantastic but what I wanted to ask you there is what is the attraction of, I mean, I've never watched UFC. I've heard of, like, cage fighting stuff. But as sure. a thriller writer, I'm fascinated by, like, what, what is the attraction of watching um, guys fighting in a cage? Like, why, do pe why is it so popular? That's one of those things that I think so many articles have been written about it, and I've written it myself. But you can talk about it all you want, but I really think that it's just one of those, just those basic human emotion things that you know it's but for me it really is it's like the ultimate competition you know there's no balls or there's no this or there's a couple of guys in shorts and small gloves and there's nothing else there and they're just going to fight and so like I just think there's no pure competition in the world you know there's nothing there's nothing to hide and there's yeah, they just have to put it all out there mm. so is it as a as a viewer like it's a vicarious experience that's right, and I think as a viewer, it's just so exciting, and and it really it's just completely taken over all the boxing um, promotions and all the wrestling promotions too, and because just because it's so exciting, because you never know what is going to happen. It's not the type of thing where they're wearing huge gloves and they're going to box each other for twenty rounds. You know, someone is going to get knocked out, or someone's going to break something, or someone's going to be submitted or give up. You know, within fifteen minutes, guaranteed probably, and and you, you never know, and it's real. It's just so realistic. Mm. Now I know and anyone can win. Anyone can win, you know. Yeah. So I know some people listening will be kind of appalled by this, um, but I really, you know, I'm kind of with you. I think that aggression and violence is an integral part of human nature. And, like, you know, way back thousands of years, we've always watched um, and bet on fighting, basically. So what do you think? Do you think um, aggression is... Do you think people want to watch this stuff because most people don't have any way of this in their own lives? Yeah, I think that's the perfect answer. You know, that there was a time when people did have a lot of aggression. And I don't want to promote myself. I mean, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, defending this. Mm. Like, I'm not some kind of brutal guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a family man. I don't drink and I don't smoke and I'm not down at the pub watching fighting and fighting with other people. Like, you know, I'm a writer. I spend most of my time in bed reading books, you know. <laughs> so you, I'm not necessarily the, the stereotype, but at the same time, I still have this in, in me as well and, I think, like you said, I just think it's a part, like, and I, I go hunting as well, and people are absolutely appalled by that. Mm. But, but it's just one of those things where I say, well, if you, if you get meat at the supermarket, then your, your, your hands are just as dirty as me, mm. type thing. And I think, and I can't explain really why I hunt either, you know, it's, I don't hate animals. I'm a massive animal lover. I have plenty of animals myself. Mm. But I just think it's one of those things inside that, you know, and I think there's a big difference 
between fighting and and violence. I mean, it's probably hard to explain for some people. Where I've, you know, almost lived on the street in my teenage years, and there's a very very big difference between a hated rage, real violence, and and two people kind of you know in competition. There's mm. a very big difference between that. Yeah. Mm. But then I guess as writers, a lot of the stuff we're writing, and I have a female protagonist who does Krav Maga, and of course I have to make up her feelings when she fights and things. And um, uh, I guess as writers, we ha- have to think about actual fights um, which happen in realistic situations rather than competition most of the time when we're writing. So are there, any, right. are there any tips you can give us then for trying to write sort of a realistic fight scene that's not in a competition setting. Sure, I mean that's probably the big the most compliments I get about the book. And it was probably one thing I was um confident about. Like I didn't go into it. I most of my books beforehand, like you'd said before, because I've got a profession, um people come to me for that. But traditionally I'd written many fiction novels before and they had nothing to do with fighting. But I've mm-hmm. kind of taken my opportunity because that's where my profession is and I've I've steered my fiction towards that way. So I didn't know until I'd written it, but I think just because I've written so much about fighting, like I, that is really literally my day job. I watch fights and I write about them and things like that, that it just kind of came out. Mm. When I read it back, it was probably one thing that I knew I was confident about. They read well and I felt like it was there. So the main things I can say is, number one, you have to watch fights, not just watch movies, mm. but watch some real fights. And, and there's probably nothing better than UFC because it's the mo- most realistic to a street fight. And the other one is... You know, go get in a fight, and I don't mean go down the street and and do something stupid. But you know, go maybe go sit, do some martial arts or something like that in a controlled environment. And and I think most people will be shocked at, especially just little things like the first time you get hit in the face or something like that. If you've never been hit in the face, and I don't mean being knocked out. I mean even just with a glove. If you're not used to it, I mean you know you will be shocked immediately. So things like that, and um, yeah, I mean they're they're the they're the main things. They're yeah. the two main things. And and the main thing is don't try and make it like – don't explain it too much. That's the main thing that I didn't do. It's not about explaining each move. He does this, then he does this. It's like being in the fury in the heat of a fight. You just do the little things and the emotions and there's kind of, you know, there's, there's punches coming at me or there's flurries of punches. It's not like he drew his arm back and then he threw the right and then he drew the next one. He did, you know, that, that's, that's no good because it's just – it's already far too slow for a fight. I think you have to try and keep the pace – of of the novel going, especially in a fight, because a fight, fight is so fast, and actually want more of just the mood than even the instruction of the fight. You know, they want to be able to keep it pictured, but they really, I think, people really need the mood and the and the the emotion that's, that's happening in the fight. And depending on the perspective of of your novel, you know, how the person's feeling and and maybe how it looks through their eyes. Mm. Yeah, so I, I um, funny you say that, I did go to a Krav Maga class um, because I thought, you know, I should try this and it was uh, an extremely stressful experience and it was an hour and a half class and it took me about four days to recover. <laughs> From, yeah, the kind, sure. from the sort of shock and I, I've really never really been hit before and uh, I didn't really get hit much either but it was like oh my goodness and my body was just didn't know what it was doing so that we're, when we're writing these characters who do it more naturally um, I presume like once if you're training for like a UFC or whatever you, you've got to keep yourself really really fit right I mean it's, it's That's very right. hard I'd argue that, I'd definitely argue that they, they were one of the fittest uh, athletes in the world, and when I mean fit, I don't mean looking good and and their bicep biceps muscly, but they have what you call ex- you know layman's terms explosive power, which is mm. which is like a sprinter's power as opposed to a marathon runner. You know, they're in short rounds and they have um, probably amazing core strength, which is their best. So sometimes you might even see fighters they look a little chubby or something like that. Mm. It's because that's not what they're working at, you know. But inside, that you know, that's where they're doing the double time. Mm. But and I think yes, experience obviously it shows. But you'd be surprised how quick someone learns to adapt to things. Like even if I have time off, I might not study martial arts, or I might be injured for six months, and then you go back, and it's a shock to the system. And yeah. I think that's like any sport, though. It's always hard when you first get back into it. But it's amazing how fast you know the body adapts and things like that. Yeah. And especially people that are fighting all the time, as a UFC fighter or someone who does martial arts all the time. Like I don't do it that much, where it becomes. If I got into a fight down the street, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if someone is practicing every day and they have that muscle memory, then 
yeah, they're probably not thinking about it that much. It's just a heat of the moment thing. Mm. No, I think. But if you're not used to fighting, and mm. I've been in the situation, then it can be pretty freak out. Even if you have martial arts training, if you haven't been in that many situations, it can be you know daunting. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one of the attractions to writing about this and reading books and watching movies and watching fights is because most of us, luckily, don't experience this. And that is that is a good thing. Um, but equally, I think, you know, millions of years of this being part of our evolution, you know, we're, we're drawn to it somehow. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to ask you there about um, gender differences because that's always something that's important you know I'm a woman sure. I write female characters who can fight but clearly there are differences so are there women in UFC or, or what do you what do you think about that there's women fighters UFC organization is just introducing a women's division now I know quite a lot and I definitely understand this perspective I mean I grew up with a single mum and three sisters and I have two daughters and a wife myself so I think I'm definitely um, that way inclined, and I would definitely recommend it to women. I mean, it's a different thing, but in some ways, I think it's almost you know more important. I think it can be really empowering to women. But I think, I mean, I've, I think it gives them so much confidence. Like the fighters that I've I've met that are female, very often they've been come from maybe they've been really out of shape and they fell into it accidentally. So they, it just transforms their life. I was just talking to someone today, Beck Hyatt. She's a kind of upcoming fighter from Australia. She's just been signed to America. She just had a title fight the other weekend. And she's had three kids and she was, you know, massively overweight. Now she's so small and fit and she's just so much confidence and happy. And she's on the news and she's on the current affairs shows and she's just like her life. And, and she just, you know, attributed it all, it all to martial arts. So I think mm -hmm. it can be such a, such a big thing. But I think, yeah, it's fine. 100% I'll encourage my young daughters to to take up martial arts more so than I would for a son. Because mm. I think just for a girl to go out there, it's scary for a, for a man to be in the world. And if you're a slight or small, like my wife's about five foot one, and I would fear for her to be walking around by herself. And I mean, here in Melbourne, we've just had a couple of really violent uh, crimes in the city. So everyone's a, a little shocked about that against women walking by themselves type thing. So yeah, I would definitely encourage them. I don't think there's any limitations for a woman at all in martial arts. Mm. Men pick it up much faster in the beginning, but, but as time goes on, women catch up even more so because I think men have so much more aggression. They're always pushing and pushing and they can't take it. Like they, they feel belittled because they're being beaten and they're not getting it, whereas women can take a back seat a bit more. But then all of a sudden it'll click and they've taken all that on board and I've heard that from many martial arts instructors as well. Mm. So, and, yeah. No, it's fascinating. And it's not really answering your question, but no, it's another no, bit. It's, I love I love thinking about this stuff. It fascinates me. Um, this whole area, um, the whole violence kind of area, fascinates me. But you talk there about your kids and um, your writing YA fiction about um, what is it, the Cage Side Chronicles. So explain a bit about the 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 fiction and why you're aiming it at the YA younger market. Um. I just think, like, the, the story is about a young man uh, growing, up, growing up in Mexico. He's picked on, he's beaten on type thing. He lacks a lot of, co lot of confidence. So he does get that through um, some coincidence and the things happen. So he finds confidence and, and um, stands up for himself and, and finds a life through the martial arts. So I guess it would be like anything. Like, for me personally, I found it through writing and, and early through music. I was into drugs and I had no confidence because I had no skills and no self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So I think through some people get it through any kind of activity. I always say that to young people: just find whatever you love, and just you just have to get into it. And once you find some self-esteem through skill or something, mm -hmm. so I think that that's all it is. It's not. I mean, you can say it's fighting or whatever it is, but to me, it's just a, it's another sport or it's or it's another um, activity. But also, the main thing is that I just think fighting is just such a good reflection of life. A fighting life is, you know, you're fighting in a ring or a cage and you're fighting through life and I just think it fits together so well. Like the young man in my story is just fighting through so many bad things in his life and I just think it, it works really well together. Mm. And I think like with the Hunger Games, you know, for example, which is basically young people fighting to death in an arena, I think the That's right. the, the kind of shock value of of children fighting is kind of lessened. But have you had any kind of backlash around involving children in a kind of fighting book. No, and when when you say children I mean that 
it starts out he's 16 and he's fighting, you know. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. By the time he's reaching cages, he's probably 18. So we're not talking, I mean, and that's reality. That's what people are doing, you know. Mm. Many people train from, from 12 to 18 and they fight. And I think it's not gratuitous at all. I mean, like, if, if you read it, most people said it's quite restrained and professional. And, you know, there's not lots of blood and guts and there's no swearing or profanity and things like that. Like it is a very young person's novel. Because it's just like a karate kid was when I was growing up. That was a big influence on me when I was young and, and I don't think parents ever had a problem with that type of thing. I mean, I still I have backlash from people before they read it, but I get so much email from parents and I've had even had like a few librarians and teachers as well just really so happy about the book that there's something they can give young boys and they're really happy with. And so yeah, the feedback's been good. I was ready for a backlash when I first put it out there, but I've just had yeah massive feedback from yeah several teachers and things, which is which is really great. Mm. And um, I'm interested as well. So on the publishing side, um, you've self-published, is that right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. I and- did actually have an offer from a publisher. Mm. And it was actually suggested to me the same as the other book to, to write these books, and they'd made it made a, an offer to me and. In the end, I just done my research, and I was most things I do myself, and I was just really interested that I have a few other books kind of on on the back burner that I've always had, kind of uh, I guess larger adult books. Mm. So I had these ones, and they're quicker to write, and, and I just thought I'd try it, and um, yeah, I just decided to do it myself, and I've been pretty happy so far. Yeah. So, um, you, how does that compare to your traditional publishing experience? I guess it's just just different. Like I wouldn't say anything about bad about HarperCollins because they have been so good to me, but at the same time, it, it's just like one of those things where anyone's dealt with a big business. Sometimes it just makes you so frustrated because you can see so many opportunities and and really, even though they did so much for me, you can just tell that I am really another number. Mm. You know, they signed me up to a book. They wanted me to pretty much to write it within a few months. They wanted to put it out within a year. And that, that was that. They just wanted it, whatever was happening. I mean, they gave me complete creative control. They were just really good with it. But in the end, and then they put it out for a month. They did great advertising. I mean, I had a, um, advertising on TV during UFC events and things like that. Then after a few months, it was like I didn't even exist. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much the model, right, so for a traditional one. It's a big spike and then it disappears. That's um, right. And the more and more I learn reading Joe Conrath and various others that everyone is in publishing knows about now. And I just started realizing I got offered a deal for these Cage Side Chronicles and I just started thinking, what? why am I giving you all this money? <laughs> I'm doing all the work here. <laughs> Even to, and I'm working for, for a, ma- a large magazine publisher. And like, so several of my friends are graphic designers and I have all editors and things like that. Mm. And I know that I can probably do a, get a better cover design than you. I can probably get a better edit than you and things like that. So I was like... Why Why am I giving you all this money? Yeah. And I like a lot of what you talk about, I think, is about empowerment of the right. individual. And I th- I think that a lot about indie publishing, it's about empowerment of the author, right? That's right. And HarperCollins just used a lot of what I already had a fan base from the magazine. Mm. You know, a lot of people knew my name in this country and they just piggybacked off that. And I was just like, well, you're using a lot of my hard work. And, you know, so why aren't I taking advantage of this? Yeah. Not that they went great, and I have, I'm not like a hard-lined indie or this. Mm. Like I'm, I actually talked to Mark from Kobo Books about it not long ago, and he just said he, in his mind, he thinks that's kind of the future, a hybrid author right now at this stage anyway. And I'm mm. kind of have it all. You know, I'm an editor of a magazine. I have a traditional publishing deal, and also self-published books as well. So I'm kind of, I can get a good selection, and you know, I'm happy for both whatever suits you. But I'm definitely an independent person, and I love to just be, you know. The independent publish everything really. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the other question I had was really about um, you being in Australia. Now, when I was living in Australia in Brisbane a few years ago, um, I found I I found it. Um, there's not a massive kind of book cultural scene compared to say there is in England and America. You know, it's it's a lot. The, the population is twenty odd million compared to two hundred odd million. So that's yeah, fair that's enough. Right. But how how are you um, getting out there and sort of building a global audience or is or are you concentrating on Australia? No, I'm not concentrating on Australia at all. I did 100% my efforts are, are towards uh, America mainly. Though I have had really good sales in UK actually, mm. almost equaling to US so that's been really good. And also the Kindle, things like the Kindle isn't big in Australia at all. Mm. But I do have quite a lot of um, iTunes sales because the iPad is really big here. Mm. So definitely with my fiction, I'm completely focused on the US. 
Um, and Melbourne does have a fairly, I guess, for its size, large rider scene. Mm. But I'm not necessarily a fan of it. I think it's a very, yeah, in my opinion, a little old school and a traditional. Literary. It's a literary scene. I mean, scene. that's right. And, I mean, you're in England. It's pretty much the home of literary, you know, I won't say it. but So, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I haven't found them any help with what I'm doing at all, so mm. but de- but definitely overseas is, is my focus, yes. And how, how are you marketing to Americans? Just mainly online things, yeah. Mm. Like blogging Just, or social networks? That's right. I mean, I have fairly like social networking. And just personal networking as well through the magazine. Just It has offered me so many contacts and things like that where I can approach Things like I said, Mark from Kobe. I mean, I can approach him personally, not just be some freak with another, another book. Especially because I've had a traditional publishing deal, and I'm editor of my own. I work for a publisher myself, mm. so I do find it quite easy to, to um, reach out to other publishers, and they will hear me, and maybe they'll help me out personally. So I've, I've probably got some pretty good deals that way, and things like that. And just building up like everyone else is, you know, there's no secrets. Mm, no, fantastic. Right. Well, where can people find you and your books online? Um, mostly just, I mean, I have my own website, Jarrahlow, J-A-R-R-A-H-L-O-H dot com. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and everything else. And uh, just Amazon, Cage Side Chronicles. But if you just Google Cage Side Chronicles, you'll find everything. Fantastic. Actually, I was going to ask you about your name. Where, where does your name come from? It's, yeah, it's not as exotic as it sounds. I have a funny thing. Jarrah in Australia is an Aboriginal name. and I'm not Aboriginal. And Low L-O-H is it really an, a Chinese name and I'm not Chinese so especially with the martial arts when I when I turn up to meetings people usually look pretty disappointed that I'm just another white dude <laughs> but the name my name Lo is actually from a German background yeah yeah fantastic right well it's been so good talking to you Jarrah thanks so much for your time uh, thanks for having me